Alright, rifle. The AGM-114 Hellfire missile is designed to be locked on before launch or fired lock on after launch. Able to detect laser energy from an observer and provide a terminal guidance on to the target. And good shot on target, one BTR. Hell yeah. <laughs> Roger. Alright, let's do it again. Um... Stingray is down six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engage in south, north, left in, right out. Alright, so when we talk about doing a lock-on after launch, uh, there's some information that we need to know. Obviously, we need to know what the target is and where it's located. Uh, and just like you would give uh, information in a, a CAS 9 line or something like that, you're, you're, you know, you're going to give the, the target's location, the grid location uh, is best. And then uh, you could give the target elevation, even though the Apache uh, is smart enough to know what the elevation is based on its uh, digital terrain elevation data that's got loaded in the aircraft. So once you type in... Uh, this grid, whatever this grid is, uh, the elevation should automatically pop and you just hit enter. Uh, but the concept here is that we've got this target, we've got this grid coordinate, and then we've got, uh, you know, some sort of terrain that we can hide behind. And uh, we are back here, and we don't want to expose ourselves to this target, but let's say we've got some other asset that can see it. So it could be a, uh, a drone overhead, it could be a fixed wing aircraft well overhead, it could be, you know, a little guy sneaking around here on this hilltop, it could be an aircraft like the OH-58 with its uh, mass-mounted sight looking over at the target area. Uh, but whatever it is, we've got somebody that can uh, uh, provide what we call terminal guidance onto the target. And that means that he's got a laser uh, with the proper code that matches the missile. And so in this case, what we're going to do is instead of firing the missile like we typically do where we, you know, we laze with the TADs and we shoot the missile and it, it does a lock on before launch, it just locks on uh, and follows that laser beam. What we're going to do is essentially throw this missile in the blind up into the air and then at some point it's going to detect that laser energy and then it's going to it's going to turn in on that terminal guidance and hit the target. So like I said, some pieces of information we need to know. We need to know the target uh, grid so that we can put that into our system and that's going to give us a couple things. That's going to tell us uh, what direction we need to point the aircraft naturally. Uh, it's going to tell us how far we are from the target because obviously we need to know uh, can the missile range that far? Uh, and I think, you know, for a stationary target, if you're at the uh, seven to eight kilometer uh, mark from the target, then you've got enough space for the missile. And of course, the next thing that we need to understand, though I'm not sure that it's really modeled in DCS properly, uh, but is the uh, the angle that the laser is being fired. So the, the direction. So if we're looking at this from a, a top down view and the target is here and the hilltop is here uh, and this guy is lasing, uh, we just need to be within a, a certain radius where... The missile is picking up the proper laser energy you know if you try to shoot it off the side it may not actually hit the laser again i've not tested this too much in dcs i did a long time ago i don't know how much that stuff is is still modeled the same or has changed but but suffice to say it's good to be behind uh the observer and be able to shoot that missile over their head and then have that terminal guidance onto target so what are the steps that we need to go through well first of all we just need to get some information from the observer so uh, i like to get you know obviously the observer and the target's location uh, we want to get the uh, the grid, and again, the elevation can be helpful, but uh, you can basically just confirm it. But as long as we get the target's uh, location and the observer's location, uh, we've got a good place to start. And then what we're going to do is take that uh, information, and we can put that in as a target or a waypoint. Uh, we'll just, in this case, uh, we'll just put it as a waypoint. Uh, we want to put that up as a direct waypoint so that we've got uh, you know the distance information that we need uh, from us to that point. But we also want to put it up as an acquisition source. Uh, and that's going to help us uh, get the aircraft in constraints. Because as you're used to, you're, you're seeing the line of sight. You've got, you know, all this information here. And you've got that little box, right? So whenever you bring up the Hellfire, you've got that little box float around. It's because the Hellfire uh, in the, in the uh, AH-64 is defaulted to fire at a low owl. That's what it thinks you want to default to. And, of course, if you start squirting the laser at the target... You're going to get that big box appear, and that's telling you th that you've got a lock on before launch, that the missile is tracking. You'll get the missile track information. Uh, but what we're trying to do is get lined up uh, to shoot a low owl. And so once we put it into the acquisition, uh, it's going to start giving us the constraints box that we need to then fire the missile uh, in the right direction. Now, without getting too crazy on how the missile works, uh, we just understand that we've got this uh, seeker head, and then you've got the the body of it and you've got the, the strakes back here and, and all the stuff that's guiding but and of course up here on the seeker head we've got basically this eyeball looking thing it's got this little sensor in there and it kind of moves around on a gimbal 
And essentially what's going to happen is the aircraft uh, is going to fire the missile. The missile is going to climb up and that little seeker head is going to start looking around. All right. And it's looking for that particular code that it has been programmed to look for. So we've programmed it with alpha, which in this case is one, six, eight, eight. And that missile is going to take off and it's going to start looking down and it's kind of looking for that laser energy. And it's just going to keep kind of climbing, you know, it depends on if you've got low or high and without getting into the numbers, it's just going to kind of climb up and it's looking for uh, that energy. And then our guy on the ground, uh, he's got his little uh, laser rangefinder designator and he's also up the right code. So he's up code alpha and he's shooting the laser at the target. And as long as that laser is on and the missile detects that energy, it's going to turn into its uh, terminal uh, attack phase and then just go right on down into the target, which gives us a good, you know, somewhat of a top attack as well, but also clears the obstacles between the aircraft and the target. Now, if you're used to shooting uh, low balls, which I'm sure most of you are at this point playing the Apache and DCS, uh, you're used to uh, seeing the target, lasing the target uh, with your TADs and getting that large box. And the missile is going to climb up a little bit, but it's already guiding the moment it, before it even leaves the rail. Uh, it's already guiding. That's what that big box is telling you that it sees. You get the uh, the primary channel track message and the missile takes off and it gets a little bit of an angle and it's going to come down. When you start shooting these low owl shots, you're going to notice that the air, that the uh, missile is going to climb much higher. Uh, and you can, you know, do this with yourself in the aircraft. You can delay firing the laser. You can shoot it as a low owl, let the missile climb up a little bit, then turn on the laser uh, and then see how that, uh, that profile changes with the missile. Now, how much time do you have to have the laser on? Uh, there's different numbers based on ranges and how you're doing things, but I would just say that a nice safe number is uh, eight seconds. If you've got about eight seconds of laser on time uh, f uh, from your observer to the target and that missile's in flight, it's probably going to pick up the laser as long as you've got it heading in essentially the correct direction. So we'll take a look at it in the aircraft and show you how it plays out. Yeah, uh, grid's going to be Charlie Kilo 76. Five three, seven five seven seven. Elevation two one nine. How copy? Charlie Kilo seven six five three seven five seven seven two one nine. Elevation. That's a good readback. BTR in the open. And on missiles, I'm gonna go trajectory low. All right. So good. orient on target one. Yep. Got it as acquisition. Turning hot. And there we go. All right, so here we are lined up is ready. Uh, with the target area. We've notified the observer that we're ready. Clear to fire. He's giving us the ready to fire. And I'm going to pull the trigger. Rifle. I'm in low owl mode. I've let him know that we fired. And laser's on. So he's announced laser on. He's lasing the target. You're going to see our low ball box. That's just because of DCS. It's picking it up through the trees. Uh, but the missile has already left the rail. Flash over. I've let him know that it should be landing anytime now with a splash call. And yeah, good shack on target. And he confirms. So we'll watch one more engagement. Gun is ready. Clear to fire. Right. Laser on. Good shack on target, no further targets. So again, just to review, uh, get the target grid, uh, put that in as a waypoint. We didn't do it in the scenario just because I built the scenario and I knew where the target was and we'd kind of flown over the area just to get everything set up. But, but get the waypoint, put it in uh, either as a target or waypoint. Uh, put it up as a direct waypoint uh, in your system so that you've got a good range. Again, looking for, you know, inside of eight kilometers. Uh, make sure that you've got good comms with the guy that's observing. Make sure you're kind of behind him, got a good angle, uh, that you're obviously up uh, the sure. right laser code. Uh, I can't stress that one enough. Uh, set up the target as a uh, acquisition yeah, source. On uh, line up on that. Make sure that you've got good comms with the guy, that he is ready, that you're ready. Uh, go ahead and tell him that you're ready, and then he's going to let you know the, to go ahead and fire. You're going to fire the weapon, and uh, at that point, it's really all on him. He's got to make sure he's got enough laser time on the target, 
and uh, you can just watch that countdown timer on your uh, high action display. Let them know when it's a, a few seconds out from landing, about five seconds out. Give him a splash call and, uh, and let him watch the fireworks. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Play around with it. Uh, do it with your friends. Do it with A-10s, with uh, APKWS and Mavericks and all kinds of good stuff. We'll see you guys later. Take it easy.